So today we're going to be working on something um, very different from what we usually get, right? Um, this is a case um, backhoe, right? Uh, model 580ST, um, which is having a DPF issue, right? Um, it's a 2016 model. And the problem that it is having is that um, every time they are operating this um, equipment, um, it will then start to show an engine D rate, um, an engine D rate sign, and then it will not uh, rev beyond 2,000 RPMs. Uh, that's pretty much the story that's happening on this, um, on this, uh, on this equipment. And this is the very same exact thing that happens even on the uh, smaller vehicles that we usually work on, right? Pretty much when you start to have a DPF problem, right, uh, an emission system failure um, you are going to see your engine starting to uh, deliberately limit power uh, because it is saying go and buy a brand new dpf uh, or go and um, replace whatever component um, so that it begins to work right basically that's what's happening here so uh, particularly for this uh, equipment it actually had two issues uh, not just dpf but it also has got a um, uh, an AdBlue uh, system, or, or which which we call a selective um, catalytic um, reductant system, right? The whole point of it is to just it's just an after treatment um, system to lower the emissions of the uh, of the equipment, right? Um, so with our smaller vehicles, you'd find we've got you our um, Euro Euro four. Now, when on these off highways, they call them the tier four, which are now which will come with these um, um, emission emission systems. Okay, so the code that it will show when it will start to have these issues is the one that you are looking at on the screen. Uh, for this particular equipment, you don't necessarily require diagnostic tool because inside the the instrument cluster itself it will actually tell you um, what fault codes uh, or it will tell you the fault codes and if you've got the manual you can easily decode from the manual what it really means right so pretty much that's the story with this um, with this equipment and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be converting it to non DPF so similar equipment that is coming from South Africa right um, comes with no DPF systems com comes with no air blue system so this one came all the way from Europe right um, it is actually owned by uh, an, a, 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 um, an NGO, right? And the NGO simply is involved in some um, demining exercises within the southern southern African region, right? So basically, they brought this equipment from the UK. They didn't buy from South Africa. Um, their sponsor just gave them the equipment from the UK and they started to use them. And as you know, our fuel here in Africa is pretty horrible fuel so definitely you know they only operated it i think for like a year right i think it, and it came as a brand new equipment right it, it it was brand new straight from the box straight from the papers whatever you want to call it and it only worked uh for i think a year or two and um then problems began and this is the problem that it is having it will not rev beyond 2000 rpms and the power is uh, I mean, it doesn't even lift anything. I mean, when we try to operate it, we, it just it was just so weak and sluggish. That's the situation which is on this on, on this on this equipment. So, uh, what we are going to be simply doing is converting it to um, non DPF and non air blue, like the ones that are coming from South Africa. And after that, you are going to see a significant improvement in its power. Right, it should be able to do its duties as it would normally do. So at the moment, as you can see it will not rev beyond 2000 rpms right at the same time it is showing a stop signal uh, a stop sign in the dashboard it is also making that constant annoying beeping sound right and um we're really going to do two things here right the first stage is dealing with the hardware right this hardware system of the dpf and red blue and then the second thing we're going to deal with the computer part right so the first part of it um is where we are simply um, converting the exhaust 
to be a free flowing exhaust right um the exhaust has got that dpf catalyst and another part that also deals with the um ad blue right which has got a, an ad blue injector which squirts um your your ad blue your, your emission fluid into the exhaust so all that is going to be disconnected all that is going to be removed <clears throat> and we are going to have a free flowing exhaust that's the first thing that's going to happen the second thing that's going to happen is we're going to go to the computer the comp on the computer we're simply going to um, reprogram it we're simply going to remap it um, so as to deal with the um, dpf algorithm right uh, the one that uh, operates that dpf system and the one that also operates the um, adblue system so after having ever done that um, we're going to have a perfect vehicle right we're going to have perfect equi an equipment that operates without those uh, emission systems right so like i'd explained earlier on um, these systems tend to fail here in, in africa due to your our horrible fuel quality right that's 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 one right and i would also say that the moment that you see i mean it doesn't matter exactly where you are whether you're in africa or you're outside of africa the moment that you see an equipment or vehicle giving you a dpf problem the likelihood of it giving you those same DPF problems in the future is pretty high, right? Um, there is obviously an underlying issue that causes those um, DPF um, problems to, to happen, right? So if you don't go and find those issues and resolve those issues, you're still going to have those DPFs again. So usually when you've got this kind of a problem, you've got two options. The first option is to go and buy a brand new DPF, right? Now, buying a brand new DPF is pretty expensive, as I've probably highlighted, right? It's probably very expensive, right? And um, and then the second solution is obviously ours, where we are converting it to non-DPF. So going on ahead with the first uh, uh, solution, without you finding what the underlying factors that have been causing uh, that DPF to fail in the first place, it's, you are just wasting money. It's as good as you're just throwing money into the toilet and flushing it, right? Because when you buy a brand new DPF, I mean, I've seen people spend at least uh, 7,000 US dollars on a brand new DPF, which only works for just two weeks, all right? You understand? So you are going to buy a brand new DPF, fit it on the equipment, and it's just going to work for a short period of time and then you've got your problems uh back biting you again right and uh, i mean uh, having to fork out that kind of money over and over again when uh, i mean it just doesn't make any sense right like i said here in africa the main reason why these things fail is due to our horrible quality of fuel so if you are in europe right if you are in uh, europe or in a first world country where you've got your emission laws my advice to you is first of all find out what has caused that your dpf to clog um, your dpf to have issues before you go ahead and buy a brand new one of course you may try that process of regeneration you may try all other kinds of process but when they have failed when they are now failing and you are now supposed to buy a brand new dpf first of all find out what caused that dpf to fail before you buy a brand new dpf here in our country where we don't have such emission laws we can just go ahead and delete the system which is exactly what we are doing on this system we're on this um particular equipment we're getting rid of it and when we've gotten rid of that system um uh, we'll never have dpf issues again in fact that goes on to the next the most the, the biggest question people ask me which is to say when you've done this conversion to non-dpf um what are the downsides i mean are you not affecting anything yeah are you not isn't is the car going to perform or the equipment going to perform um after that now the answer to that is yes it's going to perform and there are no downsides and this i kid you not there are no downsides whatsoever in fact um your vehicle would actually become even better having have done this conversion why is because um, those dpf systems have been implemented or forced upon manufacturers by your um emission law i mean by those emission laws in you in those uh, first first world countries right so the problem with those um emission system uh, emission uh, systems that have been brought upon is that um, those emission systems fail and when they fail they start to cause issues with the vehicle itself with the performance of the vehicle itself like for example when that dpf has become fully clogged what's going to happen is that there's going to be 
back pressure which is going to come and destroy the turbo right which is the biggest issue which happens on any vehicle which has got a dpf the turbo is really at risk of being damaged by the dpf system right which is what really happens really yeah so doing that conversion what it means is that your turbo is going to be uh, breathing better right and there's not going to be any back pressure which means your engine will last even longer right that's the biggest benefit that's going to come. Your engine will perform better and it will last even longer. And also in terms of fuel consumption, it will also improve. The reason why that fuel consumption is going to improve is because um, a vehicle which has got a DPF system deliberately overfuels. It's the computer which... which um, um, from time to time measures the state of the DPF and starts to overfuel, right? So as to raise the exhaust temperatures of that DPF, right? So when you have uh, done a DPF delete, when you have converted it to non-DPF, what it means is that um, that computer is not uh, going to try to, you know, look for the DPF or look for the state of the DPF and overfuel. So there's going to be some saving in terms of your fuel, right? So those are the benefits that, that are going to come your way. Right, you understand and then for the add blue system you're saying that uh, simply because from time to time you're having to fill up that add blue tank what if you go on your spreadsheet and calculate all the add blue that you are you are buying over a period of one year right and we're saying that having you converted it to non add blue you're not going to spend that money i mean that's a huge saving you understand so basically that's that's our solution at this that's the solution that we implement um, and it really doesn't matter where you are right um whether you are here in africa or outside of africa you can always give us a shout you can even contact us on our, on our um details on, on 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 the screen and if you need help i mean you can talk to us and we can see how we can help you right i think we have helped a lot of people all over the world and um basically that's how we do it and that is our solution so having a worked the, this um, equipment that you, you you were looking at here's a video of how it began to perform how it it really started to rev you hear this, those beeping sounds have gone away those stop signs which were coming in the dashboard they've also gone away um so yeah pretty much that's what we do Right, so that's 